Welcome along once again to this review channel, putting the frothy, intricate heart of criticism on the latte of discourse. And please subscribe and leave a resoundingly supportive comment. Filmmaker Robin Compillo has surrendered to the flow of memory and given us Red Island, a wonderful personal movie created with tenderness, unsentimental artistry and visual flair. Inspired by his own childhood, growing up on a French army base in recently independent Madagascar in the early 70s. It's the story of an imaginative little kid spying and eavesdropping on the private lives of grown-ups, which are a mystery to him and a mystery to the grown-ups too. Red Island elides his own poignant growing pains with Madagascar's own emergence from the infantilized colonial state. It already feels to me like a classic depiction of childhood on film. Bienvenue sur la base 180. Bienvenue à Madagascar. <laughs> Twelve years after its establishment as an independent republic in 1960, Madagascar still permits the presence of the French army to assist the national authorities. This has clearly become a plum posting for France's military personnel, an island paradise, far more pleasant in their eyes than Algeria or Morocco, in which the actual business of governing, the heavy lifting of what Kipling called the white man's burden, has effectively been passed on to the former imperial subjects themselves. The French army officers are left with a fair bit of time to spend with their wives and children at enjoyable parties, barbecues and beach trips, and flirt with each other's spouses. A bit of a white mischief atmosphere, in fact, combined with a little of Stepford for those new young wives on base who are not yet accustomed as to how things work. Military professionalism and alertness is mixed with erotic languor and boredom. Robert, played by Kim Gutierrez, is the alpha male in his group, married to Colette, played by Nadia Tereskiewicz and their bright, watchful little eight-year-old son, Thomas, Charlie Vossel, is always hiding in corners or under the dining table, peeping at things he doesn't understand, getting little glimpses, fragments, vignettes of grown-up existence. He doesn't get to be a go-between or intervene in any meaningful way in their lives, but when he's not spying, he's reading about Fontomet, the superhero whose adventures are dramatised in little dreamlike inserts. Actually dressing up as this masked crime fighter is to trigger a mysterious, almost occult change in the weather all around Thomas. Little Thomas gets a best friend, Vietnamese girl Suzanne, Kathy Pham, and together they roam far afield on foot or on bikes with that weightless freedom of childhood. They venture into the very strange bamboo lover's wood, a shadowy place where couples are to be seen kissing, and it's forbidden love which is presented to them everywhere. Thomas is to be the intimate witness to the marital breakdown of a new young couple on base, Bernard, Hugues de la Malière, and Odile, Luna Carpio. Robert hosts a boozy get-together, which Thomas gazes at through the mottled glass in the door, and Compillo makes the swarming, fragmented glass images very like the design of an Aragonite table which Robert has recently bought. For despite his machismo, Robert has an eye for decor and actually designs a ring for his wife with two gemstones his son buys from a travelling salesman. Nettled at his wife dancing with someone else, Robert dances suggestively with a deal. Does this obscurely cause a crisis? Maybe. Bernard is to have a breakdown caused by heavy drinking. He collapses at a grand party given for the general. A fascinating scene. And he has a scandalous affair with a woman from the brothel near the base, Miangali, played by Amelie Rakoto Arimalala. To return to the Kipling-esque British idiom, Bernard has gone native, and the existence of this flaunted liaison challenges the hypocrisy and racism that is never far from the surface. Staggeringly, Bernard is made to undergo an exorcism from the worldly, weather-beaten priest on base, Père Bertin, played by Vincent Schmidt, a casting out of demons which is actually a casting in of neuroses, a huge group-think nervous breakdown on the part of the white officer class. 
There are glorious set pieces, perhaps especially Robert's rash decision to buy three baby crocodiles and give them to his children. But the family's time at the island is to come to an end and a strange epochal moment comes when Thomas actually dresses up in the homemade Fontomet costume his mother has made for him and appears directly to Miangeli as the crime-fighting Avenger himself. This ushers in a new section of the film, featuring the insurgent, confident Madagascar people themselves, Red Island might be compared to Albert Serra's recent pacifiction, that cheese dream of French imperial tristesse, but without the self-indulgence. It's a compelling, visually exquisite piece of work. And that's it. Please give this vlog a like or even a love, if that's possible, on your social media platforms. Please subscribe to this channel and leave a comment. And I think I might have said this before. Please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. See you next time.